complaining about that. It's 26 years old, it's gonna have that. I know that, but I still hate it, okay? I'm allowed to hate it. Dropping turds in a parking lot, that's not really cool. So I sat down and made a list of seven things I love about my Newell and seven things I hate about it. We're gonna start with the things I hate first because people, for some reason, like to hear other people complain about things. And I would like to end this video on positive things. Let's start with the things that I hate the most. First of which that comes to mind is the tag tires in the back. It does this weird thing where if it's aired down the whole way, it rubs on the frame. I don't know why. It's just newels of this vintage are just like this. So if you have a thing where you are uh, like, you blow a bag or you have no air, your tag tire is gonna rub on the frame. I don't know if you can really see it in there, but it touches. Some of you may remember way back on my channel, I went and looked at Dale Earnhardt's old 1997 Newell. I almost bought it. Like I went there to buy it. And it was having suspension problems. We couldn't even get it out of the guy's driveway or onto the road because it was dragging this tire on the frame. They all do that. I don't know why they're built that way. It's just a weird quirk about older Newell's. Also with this stuff being said, this is a 1996. New ones are not like this. They don't carry these problems. I'm making this video for someone who is looking into an older Newell and wonders, you know, what the weird, weird things are like. Oh, you freaking laugh at me? Yeah, you know what? Suck it. Anyway, let's move on to number two. Uh, we can throw this into there with the first one as far as like the rubbing goes. The front tires rub on stuff too when you try to turn at a really tight angle on like any uneven surface. It's like the way the suspension moves, you can see up here where it does rub on the tire. And I've had it where it's bad enough, if you're not paying attention, it'll actually like knock chunks off the corner of the tire, which is weird, but is what it is. Anyway, number two, we gotta go inside for this one. Number two, this is a probably a tall guy specific complaint, but the pedal is way too close to the seat. It is just like uncomfortable, kind of just really just like under my foot. And when I'm driving like this, you know, my one knee's kind of up, the other one's down, and it like makes my back hurt after a while. And we'll throw in there that this steering wheel is way too big. I don't like this big old bus driver steering wheel. It's just annoying. Um, I can change this. I can change that. I just haven't yet. Like, I want to take this out, move the pedal forward. I'll probably cut this, move it forward. I don't know. It's just, you know, not really tall guy friendly. It's worth noting that I drove a 2020 Newell P50. The seating position is awesome. Like, I wasn't even really aware how annoyed I was by this until I drove one of those and thought, oh my God, this is fantastic. This really, this position and orientation here is really specific to like the earlier 90s ones. Um, I think it was 97, they started to revise this dash a little bit. Oh, they're backing up the uh, Pro Stars Escalade, one of the customers here at 777 going to get a tune. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is a 96. So it was, you know, built in 94 hit the road in early 95. It's old stuff. The 97s have a more wrap around uh, dash and the seating position is just a little bit better. And they started to get rid of the giant steering wheel in the 90s. I think, it, you know, they changed around a little bit. And yeah, you maybe you saw a action figure Mark Martin here. Back when I was in Pennsylvania getting uh, the Monte Carlo over Christmas, I was in my old garage and this box of old stuff was like tipped over. And action figure Mark Martin was laying right there. So I'm like, heck, you know, I'm I'm taking that. I'm bringing him back here. Like, um, if you pay attention, you'll actually find Mark floating around in the comments of some of my videos. And it's pretty funny because I bet he's going to watch this. And I didn't even tell him about this. Yeah, Mark Martin, you got uh, your action figure from 1997. Chilling in the Newell, watching everything I do. <laughs> Well, on that note, moving on to the next one on the list. Now I'm gonna have to fire this thing up and let it build some air pressure to address number six. So while we're doing number four, we're gonna, you know, before we start number four, I'm gonna fire it up so uh, we can get to doing that. I haven't fired this thing up in a couple months. It's probably good to do that anyway. I wonder if it'll actually start. <laughs> Knock on wood. Hell yeah. Let's go listen to it real quick. 
because I like it. perpetual air leaks now yeah you're saying why are you complaining about that it's 26 years old it's gonna have that I know that but I still hate it okay I'm allowed to hate it it's not fun you can fix them I fixed a couple air leaks on the uh, the suspension side um, I have videos on those called Newell air leak quest if you want to go check those out I was all up in there fixing stuff and I fixed a good bit on that end of things you know all new front airbags got videos on that too but what i have not addressed yet is the air leaks on the supply side um the suspension air and the supply air are kind of like two different systems within the same system it's like i don't know like the air that runs the doors and the toilet and that kind of stuff is like different than the tanks that go to the airbags and the like the supply tanks are the ones that leak and I haven't tried to address that yet because it's not really that important to me. It's just annoying that it leaks out pretty quickly. You're gonna have all kinds of little leaks on one of these things, you just are. You're eventually gonna get to a point where it's good enough for you and it no longer bothers you. As long as it gets down the road and holds air enough for it to be like safe and functional, you kind of draw your own line as to how much you really care about that stuff. Otherwise, you'll be fighting this thing forever forever and ever you will never find them all you just won't anybody who's experienced in these older coaches will tell you that whether it's a newell prevo country coach whatever there's just so many air lines on these dang things that there's gonna be leaks it's just the way it is this is my video with my list about my complaints and even though air leaks are given i'm still allowed to hate them so how about that let's move on to number five and number five kind of coincides with number four a little bit. This thing only has one wastewater tank, one black tank. So all the gray water and all the black water goes into the same tank. And I know some of you uh, frequent viewers know that like I don't use my toilet in here. This is why I don't want to fill it up because that and I don't use the toilet because I don't leave the auxiliary air pump on because it leaks. I don't need to open and close the doors in here. My, you know, my main door here is not air powered. I do not have slides that need slide seals to stay pumped up. All I have back there are the two pocket doors and the toilet that runs on air, that's it. So if I don't use the toilet, I don't need air. So I just leave it off. And I don't wanna fill my tank up either because it's only got one tank. If, you know, I fill up a bunch of gray water and, you know, I'm rolling around somewhere and I need to dump it, if I've used the toilet, then I can't just pull over somewhere and let my tank rip. I mean, I can, but you know, you don't want like turds, <laughs> you know, dropping turds in a parking lot. That's not really cool. I guess there was an incident with the tour bus from like a Dave Matthews band or something, just letting it rip over some bridge in Chicago. It basically dumped a bunch of poo water on a boat going underneath this like graded bridge. Look it up, it's funny. Anyway, yeah, I kind of wish it had a separate tank for that, but in a way it's kind of nice because you have one giant one. I don't know. I just wish there was two, but that's just me. So number six on the I hate this thing list. Um, not I hate this thing, but number six on the list of things I hate on here has to do with the generator oil pan drain location. And that's why we had to fire this thing up to get some air pressure so I could get the tanks filled up to operate the air actuated slide out for the generator which is something else we'll talk about later, but we just kind of pull this thing here. Okay, so when you gotta change the oil on this thing, you come under here and the drain plug is right there. You see the potential issue I'm talking about? When you drain the oil, it runs right under this rod and blows everywhere. It just makes a mess, kind of like for no reason, I feel like. I don't like it. It's just, now I know Newell obviously didn't design the generator or put the drain plug there, but having that rod right under the drain 
is just annoying. One, it makes it harder to get the plug on and off. And two, when the oil comes out, it hits the rod and then naturally kind of like flows this way and flows that way and drips in other places and you end up with oil all over this here and you gotta wipe all this off. And when you're traveling a lot, you change your generator oil pretty frequently because you know, if you're off the grid, the four or 500 hours of runtime can accumulate pretty fast. So when you're changing oil, you know, in a parking lot somewhere, you're trying, to, trying not to make a mess, it's a little bit of an issue. If you're wondering, I do have a video changing the oil on this generator on my channel from back in July or August, so go check that out. I have a whole playlist just for the Newell. So if you wanna like binge out on Newell stuff, me wrenching on this thing, go check that out. Now the seventh and final thing on my list of things I hate about this is how the main door delaminates. Um, from what I've gathered on uh, forums and stuff, this is a fairly common problem with these older Newells. Uh, it's like, it's a little bit like warped and you can see, you know, when people talk about the Prevo D-Lam, here's your Newell D-Lam, it's just this. The rest of it doesn't really, doesn't do that, but the door does. As you can see, it's just kinda, you know, it's a wooden door and apparently it got wet at some point. I don't know exactly how, but as you can see, it doesn't really, even up here, it doesn't seal the right way because it's all like, you know, a little bit warped. Not really a big deal. It's been like this since I got it. It's just kind of how it is. I'm used to it. And the deadbolt is not in here because uh, the original one was starting to like wear out. It was getting hung up and I almost got stuck in here once. So I took it out to change it. And that's when you can see that the actual door structure is made of wood. And this handle is kind of, you know, a little loose. It's probably from like a 1977 Caprice or something like that. It is what it is. I mean, you pick your battles. I knew this thing was 26 years old when I got it. Stuff like this is gonna do that. Really not a big deal. But if you're in the market for an older one, just know it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like you're gonna have weird things like this that you're either gonna have to live with or fix. But I'd like to point out that when this door is shut, see it doesn't quite seal the right way. I mean, really, the correct way to fix this would be to take the door off and you know get it on a table, take it all apart, get out the inflated foam and wood, and re-glue all of this down, clamped it nice. You know, there's like write-ups on Mill Guru's forum about people fixing this. I just haven't done it because once again, pick your battles. It's not super important to me. And honestly, I'm kind of tired of complaining now. And I'm glad number seven's over because now we get to do the cool part, which is the seven things that I absolutely love about this thing. Now, my favorite thing about this thing when it comes to driving it and uh, the, just the first thing on this list of, you know, some things I can think of off the top of my head. None of these are in any particular order, okay? It's just, you know, I just sat down and started writing stuff and it's what I came up with. Number one thing that we're gonna talk about is the ride quality. This thing rides freaking amazing. Like, you would be mind blown if you're used to something like a, you know, Camping World special, you know, Super C or something on a bread truck frame. It'll rattle your dang teeth out. All of this, this thing rides so dang good. I can take, if I put a water bottle here, like right next to, you know, action figure Mark Martin, I could drive for seven hours. This thing does not freaking move. It's that good. It's just smooth. It just eats up bumps on the road. It, it just rides really good. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I've test driven a Prevo XL 45, um, 96, you know, the classic riveted side ones. And I'm not going to lie. That thing takes the cake. The, the nineties Prevo XLs are probably the best driving coaches on the planet. I think anybody who's driven one versus some other stuff would tell you that. They have plenty of their own downfalls, but when it comes to like freaking long haul driver, that thing, they just drive great. This is not too far behind that. And I was really impressed by it the first time I drove it because I have uh, test driven a 2002 quad slide and a new P50. It's just so much different. This is very mechanical and visceral and you feel more connected to the road and what you're doing where the new one is just feel like anybody could hop in it and drive it just comfortably. 
it's just totally different. World, world's different. That's not really important right now. Let's move on to number two. Number two on the list of things I love about this thing is how easy it is to find parts for it because it's pretty much built out of pre-existing components. Um, like the engine is all over the road semi-truck stuff. Series 60, you can get it any trucker parts place, any, you know, Peterbilt, Fleet Pride, whatever. It's, it's easy to find. And as far as like the interior pieces go, a lot of things are standard household items. Like if I my deadbolt's bad, I just go get a new deadbolt for like a house. Heck, even the headlights on this thing are from a 90s F-Series Ford. Uh, the side lights are from square body, like, you know, early late 80s, early 90s Chevy pickup truck. The door handle there, pretty sure that door handle is, like I said, from a 70s Ford or something, something like that. It's just a lot of things are not Newell specific. So if you look for it, you can find it somewhere and it's probably readily available or pretty easy to source that's uh that's a big plus when it comes to working on things yourself and ease of maintenance and all that stuff i haven't i haven't had to go to newell for anything newell specific yet the only thing that on this that i can think of that you would have to get from newell is the board for the ac control like the ac units because they don't make them anymore uh the company that made the basement units in this are, is not in business anymore. So the control boards couldn't be found. Well, Newell didn't want anybody to be hung out to dry, so they had the boards produced themselves to be able to continue to service these things. That's something you would have to get from them, but that's a rare, really rare instance where you would be limited to getting it from Newell. Number three on my favorite things about this thing is just the interior layout. It, everything is put in a place that's easy to access or like convenient to reach to. Like they were very mindful of accessibility while designing these things. In terms of like Newell versus Prevo, Newell takes the cake every day for interior livability. They just have so many places to put things. Lots of really smart compartments and drawers and cabinets and just you know the way it's laid out is just really nice um i'm not gonna go walk around through it right now because it's kind of messy like i do live in here so like it's you know whatever if you want to see all the weird little details about this thing you can go check out my tour video where this thing is all cleaned up and i show you all of it that'll be on my newel playlist also which i would recommend doing because this thing is pretty dang cool in here especially for it being 25 years old Number four on the list of things I love about this thing is just the timeless look of it. Inside, outside, everything. Like looking at this thing from the outside, you know, your average person is gonna have no idea that this thing is a 1996. Like they're gonna think it's a 2003 or four, something like that. I ask everybody that I, you know, meet from like car road, they come in and check it out. I, they're like, what year is it? I'm like, what year do you think it is? I've gotten everything from 98 to 2010. Honestly, it's just crazy how well these things age. It just looks so freaking cool. A lot of it has to do with this paint scheme, which is not the original paint job. This thing was originally owned by Robbie Gordon, or originally owned, originally owned by Al Unser Jr. Then Al Unser Jr. sold it to Robbie Gordon, who painted it like this. There's like actually pictures of him in Glamis with his like Hummer, like Dakar Hummer and stuff so this paint job is a big reason why this particular one looks so good but in general this body style of newell even with their factory paint jobs does not look dated like you know you get the prevos that have the weird pinks and you know baby blues and pastel colors they just look old typically you don't see that on a newell they just age a lot better i think visually with the times and like you saw, the interior of mine does not look like it was built in 1994. Just doesn't. I don't care what you say. Go look at a 1994 Prevo and you'll find some weird floral vomit, a bunch of gold, a bunch of weird mirrors, and it's just not good. That, that's good. I've never had somebody complain about that or say it looks weird. Um, if anything, they open the door and see the way it looks and they think it looks awesome. Because it might look older, but it's like the awesome kind of older, like the side of older that you think is cool, not the side of older that makes you want to like 
you know, go to a nursing home and ask Ethel what she thinks about it. Number five in the list of things I love about this 96 Newell is the Detroit Series 60. Freaking best thing ever. Like, it's got power, it's easy to find parts for, it sounds awesome. This particular one is straight piped and I got a video about that on my Newell playlist too if you want to see that. The Series 60 is just an awesome, awesome motor. And yeah, it says Series 69. I made this decal. I think it's funny. There is no Series 69. And uh, yeah, I mess with people a lot about that. Cause I'll be like, oh, you know, I got the, the only Series 69. And you're like, dude, no way. That's crazy. You got such a rare one. And I'm like, bro, joking right over your head. Anyway, I'll fire it up again. Just, just cause, just cause I want to listen to it. I like listening to it. Now it's dirty in here. I haven't cleaned it since the last 2,000 mile drive, but. I just don't get tired of that. You just don't. Especially starting it from back there when you open the thing and you just, you flip that switch and it feels really like heavy duty. And it cranks up and just, bah, it's just, I like it. My little inner little kid that was like obsessed with backhoes and excavators and like big rig stuff just loves doing that. It's just, it's just a blast. All right, that was fun, but let's move on farther down the list to the next thing, which is, if I could find my list, let's see here. Number six is the fact that it has a fuel fill on both sides of the coach. Now it has a giant tank and the fuel fill, you just like, you know, it's on both sides. Pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to fill a ton of time talking about that because you can understand how beneficial that would be as large as this thing is when you pull up to a diesel pump, maybe it's not at a truck stop. You know, you don't always have tons of room to move around, especially when you're towing. And the fact that you can pull up to either side and still fill it up is just a great feature. And I'm really thankful for that. Now, number seven has to do back with the generator slide. Yeah, number seven is the generator slide that I just showed you earlier. The fact that you can slide the generator out to change the oil and do stuff to it is super cool because it makes it easy to do yeah that pole down there is like really annoying how it kind of spews oil everywhere but it's really not that big a deal opposed to it not being able to slide out and if you had to crawl under there to do that and reach up to get to the filter and all that stuff that would really stink so i happen to think it is super cool they put this on a slide so you can work on it easier which it's something that Prevo does not do. Prevo uh, generators like in one of the bays on the side and you gotta like stick your head all up in there and it's not really that easy to work on. Newell, Newell makes it easy to do that with this. Radiator up here, uh, this is like a squirrel cage fan. Pulls air from here, blows it into this box and the air just, the only way for it to come out is for it to go through the radiator down and out under here. That's how it works, that's how it cools the radiator and the fan is quiet doesn't make much noise no it's really like kind of trouble free the only thing that kind of annoys me that i didn't mention is that whenever you start the generator the hood stack or like not the hood stack but the roof stack up there sometimes like blows coal down the side of the coach like if you start it while you're moving it'll just and make a big fat mess like kind of like it has now but if you don't start it while you're moving it'll it'll like you know plume a little bit. Also worth noting that when you start the engine from inside the coach, it automatically closes that. So you don't accidentally drive away with it on. Now, when I started it back there, it did not push it in because that's like the service start. But if you do it inside, that automatically goes in and you're good to go. Cause driving around with that thing sticking out would be really bad. And like I said before, with the squirrel cage fan, if it's not closed, the right amount of air does not go through the radiator and it's bad. So like, you're not supposed to run the generator with it sticking out like that. It's also a lot louder because when it's closed, it's a fully sealed container and there's like sound deadening in there. So when it's sticking out, it's just louder. So don't, don't run your generator with it stuck out. Well, let's head back inside the shop here because it's cold and it's starting to rain. 
This is a triple seven performance, by the way. It's my home base. You can get your car built here if you want to. That's one of the chairs from inside. I took it out to get a little bit more floor space, so I sit in it in here. What are you laughing at? What? Are you laughing at me for sitting in my chair? No. If you want this new chair, you know it's great. That's right. Well, I gotta get to, uh, I guess, editing this video and packing some shirt orders. Which uh, which one? Which shirt's your favorite, John? I really like the tall one. Like you do? The American flag one. That is? You like the flag one? Yeah, that's probably my favorite one. Which one's your favorite shirt, Baylor? This one? Yeah. The hoodie? Favorite. Figures you point to the one I don't have on the website. Okay, yeah, you can get the the flag version. The hoodies were just testers. He's lucky. I don't know how he got that one. It came free with a pot of hot dog water. <laughs> anyway, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you found this helpful. Uh, it's kind of weird. My audience is kind of split. Like, there's people who just watch the Newell stuff. People who just watch the car stuff. I do a little bit of both. There's been less Newell stuff recently because the weather's crappy and I have to work on it outside where it sits. So I'm more inclined to work on it when it's nice out and it's kind of like winter. So there's not really any races going on, so I don't need to go anywhere. So I don't need to work on it. It's kind of all just, you know, once it starts to get a little nicer, I'll be back outside tinkering on it. If you order a shirt, just know that I pack and ship everything myself. And I put a handwritten note inside every package that I sign because I care. Plain and simple. Stapletonautoworks.com. Check it out. Help me put some diesel in the tank. That's why I do this stuff. So I can fill it on either side.